What's up guys? Welcome to the next video in the Getting Started with Lofty series where we're going to go over everything you need to know about putting leads into Lofty. Whether you're putting leads in one at a time or mass importing, I'm going to answer all the questions you have in this video, so stick around. What's up, guys? Adam Gillespie here, and I help realtors level up their game by the responsible and ethical use of AI and practical applications of their CRM in their business. Today, we're jumping back into the Getting Started with Lofty series, and I'm going to show you guys everything you need to know about putting leads into Lofty. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Okay, guys, so here we are in the front end of Lofty here. You're going to notice some things have just recently changed because Lofty is always doing updates, which is one of the coolest things about their CRM is they're constantly striving to make the experience better for us agents. So what you're going to see here is that our pipelines actually look a little bit different and we don't have that big menu on the left-hand side anymore. That's basically gone away. Segments are now going to be placed over here inside your filter section. So if you come over here, you're going to see right here, we've got filters. And this is basically where we can filter out all of these leads um, you have your pipelines once again over here. You just have to click this arrow to get through there. Um, but this is all just a little bit new. So I wanted to point that out to you guys because as you're going through this series, you're going to notice this right away. You're going to say, wait a second. This doesn't look like the things that we saw on the previous videos. So that's just because Lofty is always updating. So this is the new interface that we have to work with. Um, but one thing that is the same is that you have this giant blue tab over here to add a lead. Now, if you're in another section of Lofty, like let's say you're at the dashboard, well, you're not going to see that. So you need to make sure that you go into people here. Um, and then here you can actually show um, segments as well, where you could basically have everything, all your segments set in here. Um, if you're on a separate instance of Lofty, you'll be able to add new one. But since we're using the user uh, version through EXP, we can't add segments. Um, but once again, segments are just additional groups, which I showed you guys in the last video. So let's keep going. So when you go to add a lead in Lofty, you're going to go to that people page there and you're going to go ahead and just click this blue tab here and it's going to pull up this box here where you're going to add a lead. Now, if you're on a user instance account through your brokerage, this part here is very important because if you do this wrong, then you'll basically give everybody in your organization access to your leads. We don't want that, right? We want the leads to come in and be private to you. So underneath this first tab privacy here, you're going to want to make sure that it's not on company lead. It's going to default on company lead every single time. So you're always going to need to mark private lead. Otherwise, that lead is visible to everybody else in the company, right? Um, so with that being said, always mark private. <laughs> um, okay, so next is going to be lead type. Here you can choose whether it's a buyer, a seller, a renter, or an investor, an agent, a homeowner, anything like that. And if you see the cat in the background that's bothering me, he really wants to be let outside right now, but... We're in the process of making a video, so he's going to join us. Nice cat. Um, hopefully he doesn't attack me because he sometimes does. <laughs> but anyway, so what you're going to do is you're going to select buyer, renter, seller, investor, agent, whatever that may be. If it's a buyer and a seller, then you just select both of those, right? Now, lead type is really important because this is going to affect what smart drips we can apply to the leads, right? So if we have a seller drip, and the lead came in as a buyer, but we found out later that they're a seller, we won't be able to put any seller drips onto them until we come change that lead type to seller. The reason that Lofty does this is they just want to prevent us from being able to accidentally, um, you know, assign certain smart plans to leads that may not need to have those, right? Um, so just remember that if you're ever going to install a smart plan onto a lead and the smart plan you're looking for isn't showing up, well, it's probably because the lead type's not correct. So go back in there and fix that. Um, next thing here, you have your name. So we would just put, you know, test lead in here. Test, test, uh, email address. You know, obviously it's, you know, the same for everybody. Just put their email address in there. And then uh, you can add additional emails. If they have a spouse or relative that we're putting in with the, uh, that we want to enter with this lead, You'll want to go with the new family member over here, which we can choose their relationship, put all their information in as well. Okay. And then you'll see that it shows up over here where the family members are. So uh, once again, you got a spot for the phone number as well. You can choose whether it's mobile, landline or other. Um, if it's a bad number, we can select that too down the road and have that kind of trigger an automatic drip that will try to get that number corrected. Um, so lots of cool stuff that we can do with that there. 
permission to contact on every lead that we put in manually, you will have to manually opt them in for a call, for the text, and for the email. So make sure that when you're getting lead information from people on the outside world that's not on the internet, like at an open house or at an event, you want to make sure there's a disclaimer in your form when they're signing up that states that you have the right to call, text, email, and now with recent developments, communicate via AI or artificial intelligence. Um, so you'll go ahead and select those. If you don't select those, then all of that area is going to be grayed out on the lead and you won't be able to call, text, or email them. So once again, make sure you have permission and then go ahead and select that. Here you can put their mailing address in. And if they're investors or they own multiple properties, you can put their property address in here as well. Um, and you can continue to add that down. We do have a spot to put their birthday in. The source is also really important too. Um, so obviously you want to know where your leads came from. So just make sure you're putting in the proper source for them. Um, that's kind of hard to change on the, on the back end. Um, and it can cause a lot of confusion. So getting that source correct out the gate is going to be your best bet. Um, the pipeline. So you could already put them in a pipeline. So let's say that you talk to them at an open house. Um, they're not going to be a new leader attempting contact. They may be nurture, cold, warm, hot, whatever that conversation looked like. So you can choose that pipeline right there. And you can also segment them as, you know, uh, renters or, or whatever. If you met them at an open house, they're a buyer. Um, you can choose those segments for them as well. If you have agents on your team, you can choose what uh, agent to assign those to. You could also assign tags right out the gate. So if you, let's say that you were doing an open house at 11706 Chase Court, you would want to go ahead and enter that tag there. And then that way we can group those those leads that we got at that specific open house together and create a custom email drip campaign based on that specific open house experience. So it becomes really cool what we can do with that there. Same thing with the smart plan. You can put a smart plan in place right away. You can also put their buying time frame, whether they're pre-qualified, do they have a house to sell? Are they a first time home buyer? Do they have a buyer's agent? All of that good stuff. I think they kind of overkilled it on there, but hey, I'd rather be able to put more information in than less information in. So I think this is really good stuff. Um, you can put your appointment date on there if they've been pre-approved. Um, other cell phones, closing anniversary. If they're a past client, you're putting your past clients in here. You're going to want to make sure that that close date and the closing anniversary are entered in there and put into the transactions because we're going to have automated email drips going out on their home anniversary. Okay, and then you can add more. So if you click that little arrow there, you can come down here, put what company they work for, all of this crazy stuff. Like, I mean, guys, it goes deep. You can put it in there. So you can just kind of figure out which things you want to, what you want to enter into there. It's, it's all really up to you. Like I said, the more information, the, the better, but I usually don't fill all this stuff out. I get the main stuff in there and then we go from there. Um, but it does give you that option. And then you get the option here to send a welcome email. So in the previous video where we talked about setting up those welcome emails, this is where that email would come out. If you don't click this box, they won't get the email, right? And we want that welcome email going out because it has their username and password in it. And if they don't have that, then they're going to have to re-register again. And they might come in as a secondary lead, especially if they use a different email address to, to register. So you want to go ahead and click that. You can add a note like, you know, met at open house. Um, and then you go ahead and save, you know, you can pin this note to the top as well. Um, if it's something that's never going to change, like say it's a referral or something like that, you know, you could put the name of the referrer in there. Um, and then leave that note. And then from there, you just go ahead and click save. Um, since I didn't put the spouse's name in there, we'll just do test one, test two, and then let's go ahead and save that. Okay. So now you'll see that we've got the lead saved and it'll show up here. Once we refresh the lead here, actually, we're going to go into uh, nurture um, and it should be showing up. There it is right there and attempting contact. That's how you put in one lead at a time. Now, Let's say you have a bunch of leads and you want to go ahead and mass import those. Well, let's go ahead and jump into that and I'll show you exactly how we can get that done. So what you're going to want to do is go ahead and upload your CSV file. So if you're pulling your leads out of KB Core or out of another CRM, uh, they should download those via CSV. They'll try to segment them or, or, or put them in the, in the proper columns, but we're going to go ahead and fix that once we get in. So you're going to go to upload the file. I've got a file right here that's ready to rock and roll. Um, you're, this is all blurred out here because it is real client information, but I'm going to show you kind of how we line this up anyways. Okay. So basically what you have here is you have this section here, which is the lofty field name. Okay. So that's going to be where that information that's here 
is going to be put into there, right? So we have our file column and then the samples from our file, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to come over here and you're going to click select the field. So what you're going to do is you're going to select first name, right? Because this will be the guy's first name uh, or the lead's first name. You come back down here, you're going to select last name, okay? Because then we have the lead's last name. The lead type here is going to be seller, okay? So we're going to come over here and we're going to find lead type and we're going to select that. Okay, we got their email over here. So then we come back over here and we just keep matching these up, right? So there's their phone number. So you can go over here, click phone. Um, these are blank. So we just leave those blank, right? This right here is going to be the um, pipeline where they're at in the pipeline. So we're going to come over here and select pipeline. So that'll put them in the nurturing part of the pipeline. Um, right here is going to be their registration date. So we could just come over here and we find registration date in here. If you're not seeing it, inside there then you can search for it but right here we do have registration date okay and then here i've got some notes right so it shows blank in there but typically i usually have some notes here that are going to tell where they came from and a little bit of their criteria because they're most of my leads are fill, fit, uh, are filling out uh, um, lead forms online so for here i do enter as a or import as a note Okay, because then that'll put it in as a note in the system because there's really no spot inside a Lofty to put this information in. And on my previous one, I had them in as a note. So there we go. And then over here, we've got some other things where this is their price range. Um, don't really have much inside a Lofty for that. So you can put that in there as well as a note if you'd like, which you just come in, import as note. So anything that comes on here that Lofty doesn't have a field for, you'd want to go ahead and put that in as a note, right? So that way we still get that data, but it's just not set to a specific column, right? So this one right here is going to be the, the city that they wanted to be in. So if I come over here, I can choose the city that they wanted to see, right? So I'm going to come over here to the field search and I'm going to show inquiries for buyer, inquired city. Okay, and then that'll put their inquired city as Fort Collins. So now Lofty already knows that they want to be inside of, or they want listings from Fort Collins. So if we have our auto listing alerts set up and all that good stuff, then they will, that, that information will automatically segment to that and it should set them up on that property alert for you. Okay, um, this one here is just, they, they entered what counties they were interested in as well. We don't really have a spot for that. So I just import it as a note. And then from there, that's it, guys. Just keep matching these columns up to match as much as you can to Lofty. And then you just go ahead and click this next button right here. And it'll say 28 columns haven't been matched and will not be imported. We know that because we left them blank. So we say yes. And then here comes another very, very important part. Now we're at the part where it's going to input the leads, right? So once again, we have this very important part here that says, how are the leads going to be imported? Well, if they're company leads... We know from earlier that they're going to be visible by everybody in the company, and we don't want that. We want them to be private, so you have to make sure you select private leads. Guys, if you don't do this and you accidentally select company leads, you're going to have to reverse the whole process because you cannot change this once you've created the lead. Okay, so always make sure to put this private leads, and as you'll see, it says all the leads will be assigned to you and remain invisible to your team, and that's what we want, right? So we can also choose to put them in a segment, right? Like if these are all first time home buyers or buyers, we can go ahead and put them in here. If they're all past clients, we can choose that as well. Uh, for this situation, I'm going to choose no segment. If there's duplicate leads, you can choose to either skip them or merge them. And then once again, do we have the ability to call or text them? You want to make sure that you do that. And then we click this. I agree that the leads in this import are expecting to hear from my organization and doing so in accordance with Lofty's terms of use. Yes. So once you've gotten all the way to here, guys, you just go ahead and click import. Boom. And then we're done. And then it's going to import it in the background. Now, I'm not going to do that because I've already imported these leads once before. So I want to show you what this looks like if we after it gets imported. OK, um, so let's go back here real quick. So now we're back here into the lead import original spot and you can see your import history. So here we've got each one of the CSVs that I imported in when I imported it in. And if you are doing this import within about 30 days, I believe is what it says. Yes. So the leads that are imported successfully during the last 30 days can be reversed and removed. So a lot of the times when you're importing mass leads, something might not go right or you might forget to match a column. Well, Lofty's made it really easy to reverse that. All you have to do is come over here and click reverse. 
and then it'll remove that entire CSV and we just have to rinse and repeat that process, but we can add that match column. And that saves us so much time versus having to go through and manually select every lead, delete them, and then re-import them. So that, guys, is a real quick rundown of how to import leads via single lead and mass imports inside of Lofty. And in the next video, we're going to go through creating smart campaigns so we can get these newly imported leads set up on automation. All right, guys, so that was a quick overview of how to import leads inside of Lofty. If you found value from this video, please make sure to like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more awesome tutorials just like this. And hey, I wanted to let you guys know about a free masterclass on ChatGPT that I just released as part of my Agent Prompt University. This masterclass is insane. I give away so much awesome stuff. Mike Sherrard's in there. He's giving away awesome stuff. Louis Galt is in there as well, and he's giving away some awesome stuff, and it's all for free. All you have to do is click the link in the description, register, and check out this free 90-minute masterclass where you're going to learn how to clone yourself inside of ChatGPT. You're going to learn how to take control of your calendar and time management with ChatGPT, and you're going to learn how to create the ultimate video content for YouTube via chat gpt by some of the awesomest coaches in the entire real estate industry right now mike and louis and myself so make sure you click the link in the description below so you can check out this awesome masterclass and learn all of those invaluable things that are going to level your game up as a realtor inside of today's ai driven real estate business stick around for the next video released on this lofty tutorial where we're going to jump into creating smart plans and i'm going to go through the entire theory of the smart plans why we should separate automatic texting plans from informational email drips and the entire system so you can get it set up inside of your CRM and start nurturing these leads on autopilot. So stick around for that next video and I will see you guys soon.